everyone. Welcome. Hello. We're going to get started in just a moment and let folks get in the room. Welcome to the library. Thank you for joining us today. If you know what uh, territory you're occupying, you can also put that in our chat box. There comes a link to check if you don't know. Welcome. All right, thank you for joining us on this beautiful San Francisco day. So, uh, we know there's a lot happening in our, our beautiful city this weekend and in the Bay Area. So we appreciate you for joining us today and taking part in part of our Climate Action Month series, which is what this talk is, uh, the campaign this talk is about. So first, some library news and information. You can definitely uh, access the chat. You can use the Q&A today. Um, we're going to have a nice dialogue. And... So let it flow however you'd like in that, that river of chat. That will be our communication with each other. Or use the Q&A and we will catch those. And welcome to our YouTube viewers as well. I'll be using the chat box to throw in links from Library News and any resources that come up as our presenters are talking. And first off, Library News. All right, let's do this. Um, of course, we want to acknowledge this land that we live on and occupy and not, uh, acknowledge that it's the unceded ancestral homeland of the Rami Tushaloni tribal people, and they are the original inhabitants of our San Francisco Peninsula. We recognize that we all benefit from living and working on their traditional homeland, and as uninvited guests, we affirm their sovereign rights as First Peoples and wish to pay our respects to the ancestors, elders, and relatives of the Ramyatush community. And right now I'm gonna pop in the chat box a great reading list and resource list for Bay Area Ohlone information. We know librarians love to make their book lists. So a lot of reading material, but also websites and information about land rights and a great uh, women-led um, organization in the Berkeley area, which is where Sam is from, is Segorite Land Trust. And they are doing such amazing work. So please check them out. Some of the hardest working women in the Bay Area. Upcoming at the library, we have the amazing poet Natalie Diaz, who is a Pulitzer Prize winning poet. And we have a campaign called On the Same Page where we encourage all of San Francisco to read the same book at the same time. You can walk into any of our 28 libraries right now and find this book on the shelf. We buy extra and she will be in conversation with educator and author Michelle Cruz Gonzalez. So come check that out April 26th on the same page. Tomorrow we have an in-person event in our beautiful African-American Center and poet, it's National Poetry Month as well as Climate Action Month. And um, we love poetry. So we have author Derek Austin, who has a new book out called Tenderness, and he will be in convo with Keith Wilson. And it's Sunday Streets and the Tenderloin tomorrow. So you could do a lot of stuff. That's also the farmer's market. So farmer's market, library, Sunday Streets, all in like a three block radius. Come down to the city. Um, April 24th in our Corette Auditorium, again in person. Um, Corette's a gorgeous space. We can all spread out and still be together. But we're celebrating our Black Poet Laureates. So come check that out. And just a few other events I want to tell you about. The amazing Annie Sprinkle, SF icon, and her partner Beth Stevens are going to be doing a eco-sex clinic and an eco-sex hike walk. It's walk. It's going to be accessible for everybody. No hike. Um, and it's about, uh, they definitely are earth lovers and climate lovers and climate social justice warriors, but also talking about how all of this like bad news with climate and the dire feelings that you also get along with it. How can you still find pleasure in, in living and pleasure in our beautiful nature and still be a fighter for climate justice? 
on April 27th in the virtual library, the uh, author Emily St. John Mandel, author of Stations 11 and the HBO optioned Stations 11 series, will be in conversation with Bay Area Annalie Newitz. All right, that's all the library announcements. And now we're gonna get on with our amazing humans for the day, Salma Aristu and Dr. Bas Basma Abdul Ghaffar. And we're talking about um, Aristu's book, Our Earth, Embracing All Communities. And they're gonna discuss the book. It's an ecology in connection. Um, it combines beauty of art, science, nature with verses from the Quran. Um, Aristu is a brilliant author. She uses beautiful layers of color, penetrating textures, and uh, pen and ink drawings to create a luminous, luminous paintings that illustrate stories from the Quran. She's a Berkeley, uh, Berkeley resident, holding it down in the, that side of the Ohlone land. And she has been, uh, she's a native of Rajasthan, India. She's been creating and exhibiting her paintings internationally since graduating with a master's degree in fine art from MS University, Baroda, India. Her art and technique are greatly interwoven with Arabic calligraphy miniature art and folk patterns. Her major influences are through travel. Um, she's exhibited nationally and internationally and has won several prestigious awards, including the East Bay Communities Funds for Artists. She has a public art piece in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania and San Diego, California. And she has written and published five books on art and poetry, including her recent ecological consciousness from the Quranic verse, Our Earth, which is the one we're talking about today. And we will be, I will put a link for where you can find the book, but also we hope to have it in the library soon. And um, joining us to be in conversation today is Dr. Basma Abdul Ghaffar, who is an avid reader and reflector on the meanings of the Quran and the Sunnah. She is also the vice president of the Maqasid Institute and professor of public policy. She consults and provides training internationally on policy, governance, and Muslim affairs. She has worked in the Canadian federal government, academia, and third sector. She has contributed to the development and graduate studies in public policy at the American University of Cairo, Cairo, Kitara Foundation, and the International Peace College of South Africa. She has a keen interest in teaching in public policy and governance in Islam, as well as in Muslim history, thought, institution, and communities. She obtained her PhD in public policy from Carleton University in Ottawa. In 2003, her publications, some of which have been translated into several languages, cover topics ranging from intellectual property to morality. So amazing women, can I say that? I, am, I have a very amazing job that I get to host such amazing women. And I want to thank them both for being here. And like I said, use the chat box, use the Q&A, and we will get this conversation started now. Salma and Basma, take it away. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Anissa, for this introduction, um, very kind introduction. And uh, thank you for inviting me to present my book, Our Earth, Embracing All Communities. Um, it is an honor for me. And uh, the concept for this book has been in my mind for almost five years. And I have been reading the Quran every day and make note of verses that speak about love, mercy, unity, compassion, and sharing from the Quran and creating large paintings with Arabic calligraphy because I was, my intention was to bring the positive wisdom of Quran to the common man. So gradually I started noticing these verses from Quran which talk about nature. And I was really amazed, spellbound with the descriptions. And uh, especially I couldn't imagine it not only talked about the water and the land or earth, plants, trees, animals, birds, but even for ant, bees and spiders. And I was just wondering, it's, it's such a beautiful wisdom. And then in the end of these verses, it would always ask us to go out and look at it and find out why this creation was done, 
by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it, it, it has been my, I had been processing all this for last five years. And, uh, but, um, and there's one more thing I want to add here. Quran describes nature, presence, science of God as divine is manifest in nature and guides to study nature as a reference to the wisdom of Quran. So in my conclusion, Quran is the textbook and nature is the workbook. So that's how I have been thinking about it. And uh, during my walks in the morning at the bay, I've been trying to absorb the beauty and the wisdom of uh, God, you know, and the nature. Moving forward, in December 2019, I applied for East Bay Community Foundation Individual Artist Award for my project, Our Earth Embracing All Communities, as I wanted to get funding to publish the book because I was doing so much research and I was sure it's going to be a positive book. And I wanted to share with the uh, um, local communities, libraries and schools. And I was hoping that I'll spread the knowledge from Quran to uh, every place, you know. So, so I wanted funding. So uh, I applied for the um, funding, uh, individual artist funding. And in March 2020, when pandemic started, and I got an email from um, East Bay Community Foundation saying that your proposal is accepted and your grant is released, a grant amount is released. So I was so happy. It was, I know it was a sad time um, with the pandemic on us, but it was a perfect time for me because uh, I could lock, do lock down <laughs> in my studio and just kept painting, you know? So, so I almost painted for five months and uh, I was deep into this subject and I created about 40 paintings, though I had verses about 60, 70 in my research that I did, but I selected 40 verses uh, from which I was inspired to do these images, the paintings. So it was a beautiful journey, uh, felt very close to nature, felt very close to uh, Quran and uh, it was a wonderful journey. But now my question, I was thinking in my mind, I was planning my book as I wanted to publish as a book, that how should I, whom should I find? Who's the right person who can uh, put these verses from Quran and my paintings together? Like I needed some description of these um, uh, wise words from Quran because it's not easy to totally absorb uh, the meaning of them. So I was just looking through my friends and my, you know, some scholars I know locally. And suddenly I thought of Basma. Basma, I just met her a few times on Zoom where she was uh, describing Quran. Like, and she just, her descriptions just melted my heart. That's what I can say. Like I felt, wow, she speaks so beautifully. Her language is so lyrical and so plain, so simple, so easy to understand. So I was so influenced by her presentations, you know. So she was the first one on my list. <laughs> so I just went ahead and sent her an email. She didn't know me. There was no uh, introduction between us before that. So I just sent her a letter saying that this is my project. Uh, would you be interested in doing the description of this book uh, for me? And to my surprise, the reply came pretty quickly. And all she said, yes. Yes, I have been thinking about it for a long time and I will join you and I will do this project for you. So I'm very grateful to her and here she is. Let her, I will uh, ask her to describe her thoughts now. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the name of Allah the most merciful, the giver of mercy. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace, blessings and mercy on everybody attending with us today. Uh, it is a huge privilege. I'd like to thank the San Francisco Public Library for having me and uh, definitely huge gratitude to the artist, uh, Sister Salma Arostu, who privileged me, and I've told her this often, uh, with inviting me to be a part of something so amazing. And so what uh, we decided today jointly was that she would give this introduction and then I will talk a little bit about the conception of the earth in the Quran generally. And then I'll hand it back to Salma and she will go through the paintings because obviously we believe that's why most of you are joining with us this morning or yeah, it's this morning for you, this afternoon for me. So 
the earth in the Quran is this wondrous creation. And narratives about the earth and its inhabitants demonstrate God's mercy, the purposefulness um, of creation, its connectivity, and its diversity. They're intended for the reader to conjure these images um, that prompt us to think, to reflect, and to reconnect. These images are of beauty and adornment and giving and nurturing, but they're also about corruption and domination and destruction, waste and alienation. When people forget or choose not to believe that all creation has a right to pursue paths of purposefulness, beauty, and to worship their Lord. So we read in the Quran, for instance, do you not see that God is glorified by whomever is in the skies and the earth and the birds in rows or procession? Each knows its prayers and glorifications and God is knowing of what they do. It also tells us the seven skies and the earth and whomever is in them glorify him. And there is not a single thing except that glorifies his praises, but you do not understand their glorifications. Indeed, he is forbearing, forgiving. So there are abundant metaphors in the Quran that liken humans and human life or behaviors to various dimensions or conditions of the earth. These metaphors are intended to engage us in a process that not only situates our species as humans within a wide and rich web of life, but that humbles our tendency to believe in individualism and invincibility. So some lessons remind us that just as the rain revives a land that has become parched and dead, so too the revelation impacts our souls, showing us that our collective flourishing is just as dependent on our giving of life as the earth gives life when she is beautified, adorned, producing everything we need to keep us healthy and joyful. So through the Quran, we develop a deeper understanding, not only of our true nature, but our connection to the earth and our responsibility towards her and towards each other. And when I say each other, I don't just mean humans towards one another, but all of creation. It is not an other that is isolated, but it is necessarily of us and we are of it. So through the Quran, we develop this deeper understanding. And this means that our well-being as communities is interdependent. It, we cannot live on this earth with thoughts of isolation and individualism. So the Quran encourages us to develop a sensitivity towards the earth and its inhabitants, all the way from, as Salma and I were talking, from an ant or even smaller than an ant, to respect its way of life and to reconsider waste and corruption and destruction of natural systems of pollution, anything really that disturbs the balance that enables all of us and all of those other forms of life, again, to pursue purposeful paths. You'll also notice that I said she. The earth is feminine in Arabic. It is a she. She is animate, possessing life, beauty, adornment, light. She is responsive to her creator, and ultimately, she yields to his command. These are the powerful images that Selma expresses in her art. She masterfully depicts the connectivity and holism that is conveyed in the Quran and expressed in nature and human behavior. Her work contrasts beauty, mercy, harmony, stewardship with the unwanted or ugly side of greed, corruption, and neglect. Her choice of verses covers a wide range of truths about the earth, the skies, the seas, the plants, the animals, the celestial bodies, and much more. And she integrates calligraphy with some of her works, emphasizing the inseparability of the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of God, with the world as we understand it. Her project to me is one of hope. I am privileged to be a part of it and to be here this morning talking about it. In one line, the earth's embrace of all of its communities is a lesson for every merciful and living heart. 
So I'm going to stop at that this morning, turn it back to Selma, and let's hear more about her different works of art. Oh, thank you, Basma. Just thank you. You speak so beautifully and you have explained so well the, the beauty of the Quran and the, my intentions. So I'm, I'm really grateful to you, yes. And uh, so to move on, I think I will um, open my slideshow and go over each slide. I, uh, so just give me a minute. Okay, so thank you all for coming today. And uh, it's my pleasure and honor to share this book with you. So in this slideshow, I have um, selected about 10 slides and uh, 10 verses rather. And uh, let me walk with you on these works. So this is the first uh, cover of the book. And um, next one. Sorry. Oh, okay. So the, I just wanted to start before my talk. I just wanted to read a couple of lines from my statement because um, they show my intention and me as a, a human being trying to connect the humanity, soul, and the soil. So I paint to connect with the oneness. I listen into the unity for the design. When I paint, it is an expression of both our primordial nature and the potential of our higher place to, in connection to God. Where you may see playfulness in my work, I experience myself reflecting on the joy of this connection. All life is one. My commitment is to both paint and celebrate all living beings that make up the totality of our unique and generous family. My highest dream is that the work that comes through me may help our human family to wake up to our very special place in this complex and beautiful web of life. For me, love is the only way to protect life's generous tapestry. So this is the first painting I wanted you to talk about uh, this verse. Uh, in fact, this is the first verse which inspired me to start this project. Uh, first, I'll read the verse for you. And there's no trading creature in the earth or a flying creature that flies with its wings, except that form communities like yours. We have not overlooked anything in the book. Then to their Lord shall they be gathered. As Basma explained that we are just different communities depending on each other, interlinked and interdependent, and we cannot survive alone. So, so this was a beautiful um, ayat, which the verse, which really kept coming back in my mind. And I didn't know how I will try to show it, but I think it just happened. I started with the 12 by 12 inches uh, square canvas. And uh, uh, the circle is the representing earth. And I just started painting different communities. Um, it became very simple uh, that how I want to do it. So I tried to uh, paint as many as I could think of that time. So there are, initially there were 12, but I have done some more now. I have almost 16 uh, communities and who knows, I might add some more later on. So uh, in these paintings, I would like to say that uh, my work is in, inspired from folk art and uh, miniature arts and uh, also calligraphy. So it will come gradually in other paintings, but this one particularly is only pen and ink drawing, which I really enjoy, and light wash of acrylic paints on these. And they just, I just wanted to make them very simple and direct uh, communicating with the common man. And this is the second verse, uh, which came in my mind when I started the project. Um, this one says, and the earth he has set for all living creatures. So it's the, I mean, this is the universal law. I mean, universal plan that earth was spread for all. It wasn't spread only for human beings as we think and as we 
on this earth, you know, the behavior uh, which is coming out, you know, from the human beings as if we own this earth, but it actually belongs to all animals and small insects or birds or fishes, anything. So any, any living creature. So this is what happened. And I just took a large uh, canvas, it's 30 by 60. And, uh, and uh, before I say that, I wanted to add that I painted these on the paper first, because I like the uh, textures and I got this handmade paper, Korean paper, uh, it's 30 by 60. So first I uh, painted on the paper, then I mounted on the canvas actually. So uh, again, here I did the same thing. First is my, my love for drawing with the pen and ink. So I just drew the whole scene, you know, um, adding different animals. And, and uh, it's not only the beginning I finished the painting and the sketch, it develops. Like I give one uh, coat of light yellow, then blue, maybe I use minimum colors, but the direct colors, I don't mix the colors on the palette because I don't like the muddiness. I don't like any gray and black there. I just wanted to use the direct yellow, blue, green for the nature. So I give this uh, light washes with the acrylic paints, but I made, make them very light uh, glazes. And uh, then I add details again, like the plants, the, the writing, it's added and given again another wash. So it's a process, like I do some detailing, I give a, a light color wash and then again work and add colors for different animals or um, whatever you see there. So, so it's a gradual process and it comes back and gives me feedback and then I return with it, you know, and put my feedback, you know, it's, it's that constant effort to paint, I mean, to bring out what I want to say. And it's always a grace of God that it comes through because I always feel I'm the tool and everything from my heart comes to the canvas directly with the hand. And there's no uh, interference of my ego or my thinking or my mind. So uh, this one is another beautiful verse. It says, and the sky he has raised and set the balance. This balance word was so beautiful. I thought, you know, you know, more you look into the nature, you see the balance of the sky, water and earth. And uh, so this, this painting came up very natural. In this also, I made some insects also. You can see them when you look at the painting closely. So the insects and animals and little birds, they're all spread on the earth and the fishes and the water and the birds on the sky with the moon and the sun. Um, so basically just wanted to show this balance and how we are destroying this balance. That is the cause of all this coming on us now. Um, so uh, this, Third, uh, this one is, um, these are actually two verses. I was inspired by two verses, but let me tell you, there are at least 40, 50 verses in Quran that talk about the water. So these are only two I'm showing here, the abundance of water that is poured from the sky. Like, um, it's, it's amazing. Like, you know, when you read those verses and uh, how they generate, regenerate the earth and, uh, how we get these fruits and flowers and uh, um, um, grains. It's, it's a beautiful story, you know. So I try to develop that story as it said, like I read this, uh, um, this verse to you. Then let the human consider his, her food that we poured water in abundance. Then we cleave the earth, a great division. So we planted in our seeds and grapes and clovers and and olives and palms and lush gardens and fruits and heritage and enjoyment for you and for your cattle. So it's so beautiful, like, you know, and this, this talks about the biodiversity, like you are not going to just have olives and only palm trees or only flowers. No, it is showing the biodiversity. It's not the monoculture which we have developed now, which is again, um, causing all these climate changes and the problems. And let me add here something more. These um, uh, verses are as it is translated uh, by Basma also. So it's her language. 
and it's so beautiful. <laughs> so, um, so just wanted to let you know that. So, so this was painting, you know, it just happened as I was thinking, I was, as I was reading. So these were just coming on my canvas. So Salma, you have a question. Does, do these images come in your mind instantly? Uh, what's the process from the verse to the concept? Uh, well, let me tell you, I've been reading these verses again and again. It's not only once, and it was there in my mind, but I never planned my painting, seriously speaking. I didn't know how will I do. As I said, I my works are pre, not pre-planned, they just happen. And when I read this word, I normally paint on the wall because uh, I don't stretch my canvas in the beginning or on the table, I put my paper on the table. So I just start, I mean, I just, just reading this verse, the right, the one on the right, it just talked about the water coming from the sky. So I just put a sky, you know, there, and then slowly how it uh, brings life to dead earth, you know, so, so all these things were, uh, first I put a full coat of yellow color, like in the light yellow, and then I started adding blue and uh, green and all that so anyway frankly speaking no it happens right there I don't plan them I need reference sometime that I won't deny so like uh, if I wanted to do palm trees so I, I I looked at the picture you know quickly though I know but sometimes I need reference that I'm doing to, going to do the palm trees here or even the flowers you know sometimes I take a reference but when when it's happening it's happening that time only like oh I have to look at this tree how does it look like so maybe I'll go back and take the reference but it happens right there yes so that's a blessing actually <laughs> And this one is talking about the water and the water life, you know. I mean, we are so blessed that uh, God has given us such beautiful um, uh, life under the water, you know, the fishes and, uh, and the ornaments and amazing things we get from the water. So this verse says, and it is he who made the sea amendable so that you may eat tender meat and extract from it ornaments that you wear. And you see the ships plowing through it so that you may seek of his bounty and so that you may give thanks. So when this verse came up, and there are a couple of verses like this again. So I'm just showing two, two images here. Um, so fish is my favorite subject in my painting and the movement and energy. So I think I got the full freedom here that the everything was just moving and uh, with the, you know, my transparent, um, glazes of light acrylic colors, and then adding again more fishes, some details, and again some wash, and again some detail. So this was just my joy, you know, and uh, I think it's come up in the paintings because it just shows the movement and uh, beauty, which we discover underwater. So this one is about the creation of earth and sky. Um, again, this verse is comes many times, and God says, Allah says that I have everything is created from water. So this was a beautiful concept, like everything is coming from water, um, and uh, how did it happen? So anyway, there are many questions used to come in my mind, but but I think this this flow of water is again my favorite subject as I walk on the bay every day. So. So some of these happen very naturally again. So or do they who reject the truth not see that the skies and earth were fused? So we tore them apart and made them from water, every living thing, will they not believe? So um, I tried my best as it was coming to my mind. I just did it and I added calligraphy here, um, as Basma said, to, to prove that it is from the wisdom of Quran, which is, just words and these are the important uh, knowledge for us, wisdom for us. And I try to infuse them with my paintings. So on the top, you see the, everything is coming from the water. That one says that everything is coming from water. So I try to put animals, plants, birds, people, everything in the water. And at the, the image below shows the, um, it's becoming, two parts like a uh, sky and the earth and the water is in between, which is separating both. 
we have a question is the calligraphy a translation of the verse the the calligraphy is actually the verse in arabic it's it's the exact arabic um that you would find in the quran yeah so thank you for that basma yeah mm -hmm. so yeah verses in calligraphy and this is the translation no this is just a translation in english but uh, it's an arabic verse yeah so in this one, I wanted to show about the corruption that the human beings have been doing. Like, you know, like this is something announced in the book that something you will do, which will destroy you. So it's a warning which we have received, not today, 1400, 1500 years back. It's a warning, but we never took notice of that. I think I didn't know. And when I read this a couple of times, I was really surprised. I said, why we are still doing it? I mean, so many people knew from so many years. So this one's, this verse is saying, corruption has appeared on land and sea by what the hands of people have earned, so that he may give them a test of some of their actions, perchance to reconsider. So here I think it's more again, universal plan, like you will do this and you will suffer. You will go through hell and then perhaps you will realize so, so this is, again, we are going through this trial that we have brought this on ourselves with our own hands. So like if you go to fishing, instead of fish, you get the plastic bottles in your net. Or if you go to the, the rivers, the, the seas, you will see the clear water in the distance. But close to you, you'll see that muddy, dirty, uh, water. I tried to put the red color just to show that we have killed. We have killed that beauty and we are getting dead fish at the banks. So, so basically my purpose was to um, create the awareness in all, you know, in all of us, you know, that how, what we are doing to our um, beautiful world. And um, in this, I have written something. We are told in the Quran that human beings willfully assumed a trust that was declined by other forms of creation. This trust appears to be closely associated with our duties and custodianship towards each other and the earth, which is ultimately reflective of our knowledge with our creator. The human being has betrayed that trust by abusing fellow creatures and spreading corruption on the earth. So, so this is what we have done and we have to suffer and we have to uh, amend this now. We have to do something to improve our lives. Um, I think this is the next one. Just let me see. Yeah. So this one is not directly uh, from nature, uh, the images, but this is a very important verse from Quran. It's about the social ecology. That what are we doing socially? We are just wasting food and we are not taking care of poor people, orphans. So this verse saying, no, but you do not dignify the orphan, nor do you urge one another to feed the unfortunate. So here I wanted to emphasize that uh, God has given so much food. I mean, abundance of food. The, I mean, the, the, we saw that in the fruits and vegetables and grains and fish and animals, like so much has been given to us. But what we do, we have big dinner parties, we have eat parties, we have great gatherings, we spread the tables with food and we throw half of the food because we can't eat that much. We cannot consume that much. The plates, you know, people take the full servings and then they go and throw in the garbage. So this has been always hurting me for whenever I saw that. So this image was very important for me. It was in my mind somewhere, which I didn't know, but it just came up during this project because this verse asked me to do this. Um, and then the right side image is saying that affluent people, they just walk away. They don't even look at the beggars. They don't even care for the orphans. So, so this is something we have to change ourselves to bring the justification, the, the justice to this earth. And uh, in this one, I wanted to show that uh, how corrupt the human beings are. So um, I didn't know how to show that. So I put these masks. These are the corrupt 
people with masks. I'll read you something I wrote about it. Every living being in nature glorifies the creator except we human beings. Wearing masks of masculinity or know-it-all mask, we wander with pride on the mother earth. Recognizing the spiritual dimension of all things ought to encourage humanity to preserve nature, respect boundaries, eliminate greed, reduce waste, and root out corruption. So this verse is saying, and if he turns away or assumes authority, he strives in the earth to corrupt it and to exhaust the land and the progeny. And Allah does not like corruption. So I'm hoping that we will realize that when we look at these images and we read this uh, verse, read these verses, and this is the final uh, image in my book. And uh, this is the same, I think, verse which uh, Vasma mentioned in, the, in her little introduction, that everything in nature is glorifying Allah. Winds, clouds, trees, birds, um, mountains, rocks, stars, sun, everything. And uh, even the animals and human beings are supposed to bow down and uh, in adoration. So, so this is something, it was again, it happened so uh, uh, surprisingly, I should say. I wasn't planning this painting, but, but I was so happy with the results because I feel this is conveying my feeling. So, so I read the words to you. Do you not see that to Allah prostrates whoever is in the skies and in the earth and the sun and the moon and the stars and the monuments, mountains and the trees and the trading creatures and many of the people. And for many, application is justified and whoever Allah shames, there's none who can grant honor. Verily, Allah does what he pleases. So this was just a... Uh, Mm, my interpretation of these few verses. And uh, I'll just uh, say one more thing. The earth was given us as a gift. And it was a gift for humanity and the human being was created and established on this earth as vice chair. My heart pains to see that earth has become a commodity, land or real estate, or capital of natural resources in today's material world. What are we witnessing in our world is a failure of humanity to maintain the balance. So with that, I end my slide talk and I will really appreciate your question answers. And let me stop sharing. That's actually not the, ver the verse that I read. Um, and, and I want to say that for a reason. It shows how many times in the Quran there's a similar meaning that everything in creation is purposeful and the purpose the, the the point of the quran in emphasizing that everything in creation worships god or knows its lord knows its creator is to instill within the human a respect for that and a humility that you may not understand you may not know but everything is purposeful in this universe and everything has an inherent right to live out that path of purposefulness and of joy and of serenity. And so this is an oft repeated um, verse in the Quran in different ways, trying to get through kind of like the human thick skull of thinking that creation is not like us. As, as um, Salma started uh, by saying that they form communities like yours, then the Quran would go on to say, and no less through worship and knowing their Lord and having a consciousness that we should be aware of and that we should be in awe of, really. So I just wanted to add that. Thank you. Thank you, Masa, for that. Yeah. Yeah, I want you here uh, to be here and really emphasize the points. <laughs> so anybody, if you have any questions, we are looking You have a question, to Salma. The question is, uh, someone is saying, Billy is saying, this is such a great connection to earth and climate. Thank you, library. Then he's saying, Salma, how do you narrow down what verses you selected for the books? 
frankly, I don't know. Um, I always feel as I'm guided. So I read Quran every day. And as I told you, I was noticing these verses. I was putting them on my book. So I have many of them actually. And um, then I connected with the famous scholar, you know, oh, um, Imam Zaid Shakir. And I must thank him also because he also wrote an essay in my book and some other writers. I'm so very grateful to all, actually. So, so here I want to say that he told me that only on water there are hundred and some verses, you know, and do you want to do all? Do you want them all? I said, yes, give me. So that way I was collecting verses, you know, which were talking about uh, nature. And, uh, but when I sat down, I don't know how, I just read them again and again and again. And then I just picked up these because as I told you, many are repetitions, like, you know, trying to, you know, awaken us. So they, it says again and again and again, some verses come back. So I just picked up some verses which were um, giving me different kind of images. Like since water, as I said, so water is so many, so I picked up two verses about the water. So like that, um, I just uh, did them random. I mean, it's again a blessing that I, I felt whatever is giving me different uh, visual image, I'll do that. So, and, and also looking for the uh, verses which are different, like, you know, giving us a uh, different lesson, different uh, wisdom, different advice. So Anissa, how are we going to handle the questions beyond what was in the chat? Hey, hi, hi. I also have a very loud thing happening on the street. So um, if there's any more questions, please bring them in. I was curious about the the piece with the water bottles, Sama. Uh -huh. uh, that definitely looks like a mixed media piece. Is there like, is it a collage? Yeah, it's a collage. <laughs> and do you do um, that because your others don't seem to have that same element? No, no, I don't do collages always, you know, but as I told you, in this one, this one required that I didn't want to paint them somehow. And so I just did the cuttings from different magazines and put it together. And the next one also has a collage. This one, the food items, uh, these I had cut from some magazines. I didn't paint them. Those are gorgeous. Those are really gorgeous. I love those elements. It brings out, it makes them so powerful and a little bit like edgier compared to the others that are more nature. It's the color palette is so different. I love it. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I think it happened very naturally. I, I do collage in my some paintings, but I, as I said, it's not uh, pre-planned. So I felt I don't want to sit and paint the food, you know, like, you know, so, so I had to do this, you know, it's just a need as I'm working, whatever it calls for, you know. I just Here's a question obey. for you. I just obey. <laughs> what, what are your hopes for the book? Fatima is asking, what are your hopes for the book? Hopes for the book. Again, I leave it up to God because I have done my project and uh, I have done my best. I've been, I'm still doing my best to let people know about it. And I'm donating this book to libraries because I want them to have it, you know, at least in their collections so some people will see it. And of course, I'm so grateful because I printed, this is self-published. So I printed 100 copies to begin with and I'm so grateful to Allah all those hundred copies were sold within three months, you know. And of course, these were purchased by my um, buyers and the Facebook friends and all those people. But now, um, now requests are coming from different people also, friends of friends, you know, like that way. So I did the second printing. Okay. So it's a blessing. Yeah. So you have another question. How long have you studied calligraphy? But before that question, let me tell you the comment that came before it. I love the peaceful feeling your work implants in the heart. I wonder if you have paintings about peace and human relations. And then we'll take the question after that. So do you have paintings about peace and human relations? Yes, I have several. <laughs> yeah, because um, human, you know, first I was painting only humanity. People connected together. You know, that was my work for many years, you know, connected people, figures with my single line, you know, groups of women, groups of uh, 
people on the street and sharing together, praying together, grieving together. I have several pieces like that. And but slowly, slowly, and then became the spiritual part of me. So I was doing a lot of calligraphy, well, Arabic calligraphy paintings with the same line. And then slowly I have taken the soil, you know, this earth. And so I'm connecting everything now, humanity, soil, and soul, as I say. So yeah, I have many paintings. Uh, so how long have you studied has... calligraphy? Pardon me? How long have you studied calligraphy? Oh, calligraphy I've studied. Not study, actually not, frankly speaking, I did not go for any formal training for calligraphy. Um, the best thing that happened in my life that I have been to Iran and Kuwait. And uh, I went after marriage, I became Muslim after marriage. And then I went to Iran and Kuwait and I, I was exposed to this uh, um, beautiful calligraphy on the mosque and everywhere. And I love that line because I, as an artist, I was a trained artist when I went to this, uh, these places. So I had already developed a way of working with my line. So this line was so beautiful that because it was moving from right to left and it had a meaning, it was forming words. So somehow before I knew Quran, I loved the calligraphy actually. And I used to just copy those of calligraphic verses. And I continued like that until I really felt in love. I wanted to learn Arabic. I wanted to learn Quran, that what it says. And then, of course, since 20 years, I'm deep into this. <laughs> so it's a blessing. So you have a comment. I like how the images of destruction and imbalance are in a different medium and color pattern than the paintings that show harmony with the earth. I guess that's a comment, but if you have something to say about that. No, I think, it, as I told you, it just happened naturally. Like, you know, each verse was have, telling me what to do. I wasn't planning. Each verse was telling how to do this painting, you know. Yes. So it, it went like that, yeah. And are some of the paintings available for purchase? That's another question. Yes, sure, there are. I sold about five, I think, but still I have many. <laughs> so where would people go to your salamarastu.com? Selmarsa.com. Okay, that's yes. in the chat. Yeah, yeah. Or if, if they if they really like something, they should reach out to me through my website and I can let them know. Anissa? Yes, I was putting all those chats, those links in the chat. Thelma also has an Instagram, so you can follow her there. Um, and her art is gorgeous. It's so beautiful. I love this presentation and being able to see it. And Selma, I know we've been trying to get you in for a long time. And I can't say how perfect it was to bring you during Climate Action Month because this has been just such a beautiful addition. And your Thank art you. is gorgeous. Let me come on camera. There we go. And I apologize for all that outside noise. But I want to thank all of our library community for being here as well. And I want to thank Dr. Basma Abdul Ghaffar for joining us from Canada. Thank you, Seth. The joy of Zoom, there are silver linings. We get to have amazing humans from all over the planet. Um, thank you so much and library community. We'll see you again. I hope to see you tomorrow, Sunday streets in our beautiful Tenderloin. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you Anissa again. Thank you so much for inviting us, really. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you. All thank right. you all, yeah. Bye friends. Have a good Thank one. You.